welcome to Art in the Raw, Conversations with Creative People. Tonight, I'm excited to introduce you to Ted Wolf. Ted is an artist, entrepreneur, and co-founder of Just Point It, the company that makes snowboards, skis, and apparel featuring works by local artists. If this is your first time watching, you might be wondering who I am. I have been in love with art and music my entire life. I've now been working in the professional gallery world for about 15 years now, and I started Art in the Raw about halfway through 2020 to keep people connected and inspired. If you would like to know more, take a look at the description below. In the meantime, I'm excited to introduce you to Ted. Where are you joining us from tonight? I am joining you from Taos, New Mexico. I was on the chairlift this winter looking at the design on my buddy's snowboard and started thinking, whose art is this? Where did this come from? This is another way that we see art in our world outside of galleries that's not framed out on the slopes doing what we love to do. So that was kind of what started my exploration. And a mutual friend of ours told me about you. You have a company called Just Point It. I grew up in Santa Fe skiing with my brothers and my family and would always be in the mountains and yelling and skiing down the steep terrain or came up with a slogan, just point it. You know, you just got to go for it down the mountain. Yeah, we started making clothing and started skiing in the extremes and towels and kind of just went from there. And now we're designing New Mexico skis. We're lucky to get all these local artists to design them showing off New Mexico. So at this point, you're offering both snowboards and skis, right? We started with skis. I grew up skiing. And my girlfriend and partner is a snowboarder. So why not make snowboards? We're making them out of the Never Summer factory in Denver. They make some really good snowboards. That's what they're known for. So I just said, why wouldn't we make snowboards? So we got into snowboards too. I love that. And as I understand it, you started a little smaller. We started really with just stickers and t-shirts. I mean, I'd say we've probably been doing it for over 10 years with that. The skis kind of just fell into my lap. I had a buddy who was a pro rider for Never Summer and uh, said, hey, you should talk to these guys. They have, a, you know, they'll be willing to make you guys some skis and didn't really ever think I'd be making skis. I just thought it was a childhood dream and went with it. And uh, now we're super happy to be making them. Are some of the designs your artwork as well? So our first year we had a buddy of mine, Vela, who's a muralist in Santa Fe and he used to do graffiti and a bunch of big murals and so we got him the first year which is actually I think behind me here with the wolves on it he did the wolves with his, you know the mountains and the Pueblo and the gorge and then the next year another buddy designed and then the third year I did the art for the Zias pretty simple I like to get other people involved so it's not necessarily all mine try to get local guys to uh show off their art, you know, and put it on top. And that's just kind of a whole different way of going about curating art and collaborating and supporting local friends is very cool. I mean, I'm also a painter. I painted in the movies for uh, over 10 years. So I do a lot of painting, but not necessarily fine painting. So I'm more of a design it and let them paint it. It's a passion, but it's not easy. The more of these conversations I have really kind of boils down to nothing that's really worth doing it's particularly easy but you you just have that drive right yeah, you got to point it you know got to go for it and that's kind of our motto just point it well i love that the the name of the company is also the motto and as someone that grew up skiing and is an active snowboarder now i i know that moment i can appreciate that it, it speaks for itself and people that understand it understand it a lot of people don't and they're like what is that and it's like, you probably haven't pointed it before. So the awesome. people that don't get it probably are just not your, your market to begin with. Your brothers are involved. I have two brothers. One lives in Costa Rica. He's not involved as much as my other brother who lives in Santa Fe. He's my partner and just point it. So it's pretty much our company together. My other brother moved away a long time ago and he's a surfer now. And we are the snow guys. So we hang out here and try to surf the snow. For, for people who don't live in New Mexico and are not familiar with the Zia, which is a big part of your designs. You want to go into the Zia a little bit? I mean, the Zia for us New Mexicans is super important. I mean, you know, it's on the flag. If I want to explain what it means, it's like the four stages of life. And then it's the four seasons, all the lines. And then it's the uh, 
the four elements. This is what the natives have taught me. And then, so then the other four is the directions, north, south, east, and west, right? And so it kind of gives us this, this like circle and this unity that we all have together. You know, when someone sees a Zia, like, oh, you're from New Mexico. And so I thought for sure, putting it on the skis is like, okay, we're going to you know, show everybody that we're from New Mexico. That's such a special symbol for us. And I thought, why not? And I love it that it's on the bottom of all the skis and boards. If you're down on the run and you see somebody mm -hmm. on the chairlift with the gear, it, you immediately recognize it. And that is kind of our staple is um, the bottoms is being red and yellow. And then this year we did red, we switched it, but we still kept the Zia. We made red bottoms with yellow Zia just to kind of change it for the new ones. I think we'll keep doing that. One of the coolest things is seeing your buddies on the lift and you know it's your buddies because they got the point of skis on and you can see them from a mile away. And, and we only do a limited amount of skis every year. So we're only making a hundred pairs and we just want to do small runs, sell out and go to next year. I love that they're all limited editions. I mean, you don't necessarily number them. They are. So I... Originally, I didn't know that, and so I was trying to number them all, but they do come out of the factory numbered. And so I kind of, you know, will sell them backwards. I always keep the first ones, but now I do it 20 of each size, and they'll be numbered. Then you're like, oh, you got number 15 out of 20. There's, there's something about the fact that there's only that small number. There's not 10,000 copies of, of those skis behind you. Yeah, and I think that's what people like. You know, I think they want to be different. They want to have something that nothing, nobody else really has. And that's kind of our, the niche I'm trying to fill at this point, because I'm not going to compete with these big corporations that make thousands and thousands of pairs for a price that, you know, is not really affordable anymore. Like, I mean, they're probably making them in China and doing this, like, so we're, we're American made and we just wanted to keep it limited and like you get them and they're gone next year. You can sign up for next year. And that's kind of the way we've been liking it. Cause I don't want to get too involved where I can't control it anymore. Maybe we'll make a Colorado ski one day, but right now we're happy sticking with New Mexico. You're working with Never Summer, so they're producing X number of boards mm -hmm. for you, and they're known for making great gear to begin with. We're very fortunate to be working with them. I couldn't tell you enough about how happy we are with the product. It doesn't just look good, it actually skis good. I tell people, like, I've skied everything, and I haven't enjoyed a ski as much as the ones I'm on and I'm, you know, I could be biased, but also the snowboards, I'm not a snowboarder, but I have used them and really durable. You know, that never someone makes a product that doesn't break easily. And that has been a good thing for me because I'm not dealing with a lot of returns. Working with them has been awesome because they're just like, yeah, man, we make a, we make a bomber product and you get to put your name on it. So we couldn't be more stoked. So, so in terms of more traditional art and prints are signed and numbered, you mentioned the boards and skis are numbered as well. Where, where, where do you actually see the numbering? They're on the top sheet. Let's see. So actually on this one, I can show you. It's right here. This is the very first pair of skis I ever made. Oh, wow. And I kept them. And it says 0001. It's 181001. And it'll say that on every pair. But there'll be like one, two, three, four, up to however many I make of that size. So I didn't know that when I first made them and somehow these came back to me and um, that's the very first pair. So I'm not getting rid of those. They'll be on the wall or in my collection forever. And so that that's cool. And I, I didn't realize that because I was going to start actually numbering on myself. Back to your history, you went to UNM, right? I did. Yep. I graduated from UNM. Uh, you were studying painting or general arts? No, I was actually a sociology major. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I always painted. Mm -hmm. I did I was doing graffiti too. Went to college for sociology, which was interesting. And then when I graduated, my buddy was working in the movies and I needed a job. And so I went there and never left. It was like, I started painting movies for 10 years. You know, it allowed me to go skiing because I could take the winter off. I could work a lot. And then come wintertime, I would just go skiing. And so that's kind of how it developed into my passion and still trying to make money and learning how to paint. And now I'm painting houses and living in Taos and skiing as much as I can in the winter. And I paint houses wow. in the summer. That's kind of the dream in my, in my opinion. Love it. Raising a family here and two girls finally gravitated towards these mountains because they pulled me up here. You know, I, I grew up in Santa Fe and 
up there, you know, and it, but there's always something about Taos that just was pulling me in, you know, the big mountains, the steep, it was just so extreme that it was like, that's, that's it. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't been there, you got to go check it out because I've skied a lot of places in the world and Taos is still my favorite. It is known to be a world-class mountain. That's, that's interesting that you studied sociology. I, I actually know quite a few artists and I know a lot of artists that have studied sociology and psychology and come out practicing art in one way or another. So I I feel like those things are connected. Maybe there's a curiosity about the world or. Yeah, about people and why they do what they do. And I don't really know why they do what they do. So I was like, I don't want to do that. Do what I want to do, which is go skiing. And if I can make a company where I can enjoy what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. then that's what I do. I didn't want to be in an office or, you know, at a desk all the time. And I knew that as soon as I got out of there, I was like, it's not for me. And and I want to do something, you know, with my hands or something. Painting was fun. It's a lot of work, but it was was fun. And I learned to craft there. And now skiing was just, why not try to do something that you're going to have fun doing every day. And skiing is that for me. I hear you. And then the film industry is kind of amazing. I have other friends in the industry. So I understand you can pick up certain jobs, work that job for a while, and then maybe skip the next Next job or pick up another one. I was fortunate to make that work for me. Not everybody had that ability and they get kind of stuck in the the race. If you find the right people, they'll be like, of course, go do what you want to do. Like they understood that my passion was not working on movie sets all the time. It was out the side being in mountains. And when you do take those jobs, it can be pretty intense. So you might need a little bit of time off. Oh, definitely. They're, they're pretty intense. I mean, the movies, the long hours, long days, long weeks, turn into long months. It wears you out. There was fun stuff that we did, but with a family, it's just so hard to, you won't have time to see your kids you know, home. You know, they always want you to go somewhere. And so you're always traveling around. And now that I have a family, it was just like, it's just too hard to be away from them for that long. I've been fortunate that I've been stay-at-home dad the last two years. I get to hang out with my baby and get that time with them when they're young. I don't know how many dads get that, so I've been very fortunate to be able to do that. And my partner's been awesome, and she's been working, and, you know, we're making it work. So I do my skiing in the winter, and then in the summer, I've got to paint. So, you know, it's a balancing act. The balancing act of, of life. Seems like you have a pretty good balance. I think so. I like it so far. It's going good. The hat you're wearing is one of your offering this, yeah this is an actually another design mm-hmm. um an artist here in taos he etches the titanium with whatever logo you want just this unique art on a hat that i've never seen before so when i met him i was like hey we need to make some pointed ones of those he makes you know really cool other jewelry and stuff but I was like, we need some of that we need pointed ones of those you know local guy in taos and mm-hmm. we're making new bell buckles right now which i'm really excited about like with a wolf hopefully on it because my last name is wolf so we always put wolves in all our a lot of our designs he's designing something right now that i'm kind of waiting to see and excited for what it's going to be and i'm not quite sure he said he's making me something special so i'm excited for that we will have some really cool belt buckles coming out so, so what's his name his name is peter gilroy check him out if you are interested in any kind of metal work in towels because he does all kinds of different stuff and i think he just got a new shop on the south side and Peter Gilroy's his name. Just try to work with all these people that are locals around here, trying to help each other out. If we can, why not, you know, stay local? It, it seems like a lot of this just kind of naturally unfolded for you. Imagine there's some perhaps struggle or, or maybe late nights trying to figure out how things were going to work. Generally distribution, that can be kind of a tricky thing. There's those nights where you're like, try not to lose sleep over it, you know? Like, what am I doing here? Getting myself involved in this industry of t-shirts and hats are cool, but skis are not a cheap product to make or to distribute or to compete with these other companies. Sometimes I wonder how I'm in doing it, but (laughs) I just try to, you know, people are good and they wanna have something unique. And that's kind of my niche, I guess, in the whole world of it. I really don't get it either. I'm like, why am I competing with these billionaire companies? when they I can't afford what they're doing. Skiing is an interesting sport because not everybody skis. You know, not everybody's pointing it. And so I'm in a very limited 
market you could say in like hats you can sell to anybody everybody buys a t-shirt skis you don't buy a pair every year usually i have a couple of guys who do which thank you guys like garson and comes and buys a board every year just to support us and that's really cool but most people don't and so i'm always got to find new customers every year so that's a challenge in itself because new mexico isn't as big as some other states it usually always seems to work out and you just try not to worry too much about it because we're doing what we like and what we love and usually that pays off. Well, I've even just looked at doing a small run of t-shirts or hats. That's an expense. So yeah, stepping it up to the extra level, the snowboard or skis, at a certain point, you just have to believe that people who are into that niche thing are are going to, are going to come out. They're going to come out. Yeah. And they do. And they find me. It's funny. I mean, I, I saw a couple stores like Ski Tech in Santa Fe sells my skis. They're great. Taos has been changing a lot. And so now their ski area is got bought out and now they're kind of more corporate, you know, and they're not like taking the little guy anymore. So a lot of my sales come from online, justpointed.com. Most of my sales come from that and word of mouth. I sell out of more bars and galleries than I do of ski shops. You know? Like they'll hang my skis in the alley cantina and I'll sell skis out of there, which is a bar in Taos. I mean, I could picture myself sitting there having a drink and I see the skis or the board on the wall. I'm like, oh, what's that? That's yeah. great advertising. So, I mean, that was a question I had was about the initial distribution at this point you're selling out of a few shops and and you have the website but that's the funny thing about websites is there's so many websites that yes anybody can have a website but how do you direct traffic there right that's a big job right there i don't even like dealing with it i've been actually thinking about getting an assistant that just deals with the website marketing and advertising is those are huge skiing is the best advertising when you're there and you're skiing that's the easiest way for me to sell skis off season like now i gotta definitely come up with new plans to keep it flowing and trying to be ready for winter ahead of everybody coming into the summer i want to have my skis in so that i'm selling them before christmas which is i've, I've never been able to do that really because i'm behind all the time but that's the new mexico way just... we do live in the land of manana so, so they say great. it's great most of the time but then there's times when you gotta buckle down and on top of it but i'm learning well what is great about the fact that that you are an actual skier and i don't know if if you run your instagram page i, I do i have help with my buddy he's a photographer he helps me with it a little bit because that's another thing i'm not as good at but i'm getting better mm -hmm. just trying to stay on top of that because that's an easy way to advertise for me because it's free and you can just do it and people are looking at it amazing videos of powder skiing and anybody who's into it is going to see that and relate right. and that's a good way to do it i mean that's an easy way for me to do it and we're trying to get a movie made and there's a whole lot of in the works going on right now for next year like we're making like a talus movie ski kind of movie that's a lot of work it's going to take a lot more time than i thought we don't know when that's coming out it's coming soon that's an awesome plan and i think it'll pay off if, if you're worried next year's designs are going to sell out like when i do come out with next year's design which we're working on right now I just need to be a way to pre-order it online on my website. You can go on there. Last year we did, I mean, they were great. The, the Dauberdeans, which is another artist that I used last year on the snowboards and skis. Was, I don't know if you saw those, but he's a famous artist up here, photographer. I should have put them out earlier, sold out of a lot of them. And people were like, well, I didn't, I wanted that snowboard. And I was like, well, they're gone. You know, that's a whole nother ballpark of trying to figure out how to organize that. I'd say that's a good problem to have. Yeah, I guess so, right? I mean, selling out's good. I don't want to have a lot of snowboards in my closet at the end of the year. And like we mentioned, our, our mutual friend, I, I know he told me personally that he buys a new board every year, even if he doesn't need a new one, just because he wants to support the cause and collect the new design. So that's become his collection. Right. Yeah. Garson does do that. He, uh, every year he's bought in the board since we made them. I think we've had four years of boards. And this year he bought one. He just pretty much just signs up. I have a couple clients like that that just, when they get here, just send them a pair. Like I said, not many people do that because they don't want need a new board every year unless they're really pointing it a lot and destroy their, their gear pretty quickly, which we do. And, but. and our mutual friend Garson, I, I can attest, I've been writing with him for like 20 years. So I know he does that, but I, I know in talking to him, a big part of it too, was just almost the collecting aspect of it yeah that's the cool part right that's the being limited and i only made 45 the first year if you have those it's kind of cool like you know you're like oh you got the very first pair of point skis 
right on man i see them still out there and i always just yell at people when they have them on i'm like wow did you have the first ones rock on dude so i know they're they're loving them because it's been five years and that's a long time for me to have a pair of skis it's really cool that people are still skiing on it i hold on to every first model i make now just so that i have it in my collection i guess i want my kids to see them later down the line so like hey he made skis I- imagine that would be something you would regret later on if you didn't do that I, I do keep the ski stuff it does have some meaning to it well so speaking of collecting this would not be art in the raw if I didn't ask you if there's anything you collect so we we know you collect skis is there anything <clears throat> else I used to collect like these little dunny things if it had graffiti artists doing them <clears throat> so I used oh, to collect cool. those yeah, so everyone was like, you know, limited edition or what. I'm starting to collect more art. You're collaborating with with artists on the different designs. So are you collecting originals or, or prints by any of the artists that you're working with? I try to get originals, yeah. Like Vela, I got some from him when he does it. I usually have them try to paint me the piece and then we digitalize it. I'm starting to collect art more, trying to support artists. But I know that's not easy to be an artist either. It's, it's a labor of love. And it truly is. It's one of those endeavors you pursue, not because you're assuming you're going to get rich off of it. You're just driven to do it, which I think is similar to, to what you're doing with, with just point it. I-, I like doing it. Puts me skiing more. That's cool. If you like painting, <clears throat> try to sell your art and you'll be painting more. You got to put yourself out there, you know, at some point you could be scared or nervous, but honestly, people are pretty receptive to that and they want to help. You just got to try it. You got to point it and go for it. And we find that works out better than, than not. Just just putting it out there and, and going for it. You know, don't be scared to take the chance. You know, I could have been scared and not done it. And now it's just been five years of doing this the ski thing and it's working and it's, it's totally fun. And I wouldn't, I'm glad I did it. And where would you be now if you didn't do it? Sure, that would be fine um, too, but... Would, would it be as fun? Probably not. Or did you more days on the mountain? And, and, and if your work day is... I need to go ski the powder to make the video to post on Instagram to promote my product. That's an awesome day. I love that part. And, you know, not always is it that glamorous, but the best place to sell skis is on the chairlift. So when work doesn't feel like work. That's the best kind of work. Like a lot of people just just go to work and come home. I don't know. It doesn't seem like the right way to go about it. There's a whole lot more going on out there. It's how you make of it, right? I mean, it's not about being rich. It's about having quality of life is the most important we have choices we're lucky to have those choices but we should you know take advantage of having those choices what i always thought like well they you can do whatever you want we're in america just start a company you you're worth more and everybody has something unique to give and people just get caught up in this world just makes it hard to not want to just go for money back to balance and it out i'm glad i got to be raised in new mexico where i'm not in a city and i, I couldn't imagine being there for through this last couple of years i am not yeah. From New Mexico, but I've been here since 98. Where are you from? I'm from Colorado. I grew up kind of near Beaver Creek back before it was what it is like now. Eagle? Yeah, I went to elementary school in in Eagle, Eagle Valley. Mm -hmm. Lived on a mountain above the Wolcott exit. So Uh I started skiing the year Beaver Creek opened. It was a very different place at that, at that time. So if, if you could go anywhere in the entire world and ski, where would you go? I've been to Alaska. <clears throat> that place is awesome. I would probably go back there first. I really want to go to Europe and like go to Chamonix. I've never been there and I just, that's on the bucket list for me. And Japan is the other one. They get so much snow there. They just always seem to get so much that I want to go check out that country and see what Japan's all about and skiing. Like, and then South America too. I want to go to South America and ski down in Chile, you know, or in Argentina. And that would be really cool in the summertime to go there, go skiing. Yeah, if you work it right, you could just be skiing 12 months out of the year, almost, right? There's people that do that. It would, I would almost do that. Maybe not 12, but I'd go for like nine. Argentina's got both. Though. You go down there, you got the beach, and I'm not skiing. I, that could be quite a day. You can do both in the same day, supposedly there. Santa Fe, people who are into golfing and mountain biking you could in theory do all of those things in one day so what we do here this some <clears throat> this spring has been weird but we usually ski and then go rafting down the down the rio grande we'll ski at the peak and then go and some people bike into the rio grande and float the river in the same day and now it's river time so we're kind of transitioning into water 
So do you think you might make some sort of water gear in the future? My buddy makes paddles, which are cool for paddle boards. And maybe just some like dry fit water shirts that you can wear on the river. Come up with some kind of sunglasses or something. My buddy owns Pit Viper and I'm like, maybe we should make some Pit Viper pointed glasses. Oh, no kidding. Your buddy owns Pit Viper? <laughs> Pit Viper. Yeah. Yeah, he moved here. Oh, um, no kidding. This is like that old 80s stuff is cool. It's yeah. coming back. And he's, he made it cool again. And it's funny because you're like, oh, people like that stuff. Now, I might make a pink ski just because it's oh, kind of cool. You should. Like a hot pink ski with a yellow Z on it. That's okay, so there's maybe the younger generation that has never seen the thing before and they think it's cool. But then there's also the nostalgia element, right? So like I was reminiscing about my hot pink Atomics with the yellow splattered paint. So I have a feeling if I saw a snowboard that had a similar kind of vibe to it. You might want it. I would be very exactly. tempted. You'd be like, hey, that reminds me of something I've seen before. It has something that you like with the Zia. You'd totally get it. Exactly. The, so yeah, it's on my list. It's a big list, but it's on there. So I like to ask a lot of guests about time travel. And so I kind of feel like we're talking about time travel right now. 70s and 80s. And I feel like that would have been a cool time to be older and wearing all that stuff. For real. Skiing was so popular, you know, back then and it kind of died and it came back now. When I was a little kid in the 80s. It snowed more than, I don't know, it seemed like Talos was just thriving in back then. If I was going to time travel, I guess maybe you know, I'd pick back like, when I was born. Would you go back to Taos in the 80s or, or somewhere else? I think I would go to Taos because I, I always like love the St. Bernard vibe that that place gave me all the time. And I just would, I think it was probably so cool in the 80s. Like it was probably just like the hippest place to be. I would have really liked to see that thing that really bumping with John Maye, which was the old owner, just like him in his prime, just this French guy. And this, this is such a cool place. And it's gone now, which has just changed the whole vibe up there. It's a different place. It's not the same. Taos has changed. The Ski Valley is different. I mean, I knew the owners when I was there. Now it's owned by a billionaire. And, and so I just really liked the Blake family and all. Family owned. It was really cool. You know, I had this European feel and... Oh, they're trying to keep it, but it's just not the same. For favorite movies, Hot Dog. Have you ever seen that movie? I don't Watch know if I movie. have. That's kind of where I'm, I'm basing my movies. Kind of has that one in it. And then it mm -hmm. asks an extreme. I'm going to like combine them. Because one's like more Hollywood. And then the other one's, you know, Ski Bum. Watch Hot Dog. It's my favorite one. But that lifestyle, like I moved to Salt Lake City or I'm going to go to California. I'm going to yeah. ski every day. And this is the lifestyle that's not really, people don't do that stuff anymore. Or it doesn't seem like it. Um, and it's harder to do. It's like you can't just go and you know, everything's so expensive and, you know, everything. And the ski industry is, it's a rich amount of sport. What can I say? It's like, we're lucky yeah. we can do it. I feel I, like I it get, didn't used to be that way as much. As much, yeah. It seems like it's pushed more into that. Yeah. So Sorry. speaking of time travel, how, how a lot of people got into these sports, it was not that way. My fiance, for example, like he grew up in Portland and they go to the Safeway and you'd get the Safeway passes for like 20 bucks or whatever. Yeah, no. I mean, we used to go to Crested Butte growing up all the time because they had a free month. At the end of the year, they'd, they'd say free skiing for the month for everybody. And so it was just like, my dad was like, all right, we're going to Crested Butte free ski month and we go ski for five days for free and they just did that every year and that's like a thing of the past now they're owned by mail so how about other inspiration like music do you listen to music when you ski and when you paint um i do i, I not necessarily when i ski as much because i'm usually trying to listen to the mountain maybe i don't know if that sounds funny but i, I want to be like zoned into what i'm doing <clears throat> so like i'm skiing i I don't usually listen to music because unless I'm alone, but I'm usually not alone. So I'm always talking to somebody or something's happening. And then when I'm painting, I definitely listen to music. So my, my main genre, like I used to listen to a lot of hip hop when I was growing up and reggae and then oldies and stuff with my parents, you know, I'd, I'd listen to the, like, the Beatles and all this stuff growing up. But like right now, if I were like listen to something, it'd probably be in the genre of like more hip hop -y. Like I, I don't think I have like a favorite artist or anything, but I was into that like break dancing graffiti lifestyle in high school and even in college and all that so it kind of it's still there i'm like oh i gotta put on the beat and it has to be loud and so that's kind of where some of my art like i have graffiti shirts you know still have that street kind of mentality we're not just these white kids out there that didn't have that background like i lived in albuquerque for a long time kind of have a little bit more of the background of like you know a little bit rougher so i like yeah i kind of like the like the gangster stuff i'm pretty much always listening to music unless i'm snowboarding because i like the sound of the snow and I want to know if somebody's 
flying up behind me. You got to be aware of your surroundings and the snow will tell you what's happening. You know, you can hear it before it happens. You're like, oh, is it icy? Oh, it's icy. You can hear that from the chairlift. And if you're not listening, you don't hear it. Mm-hmm. If you're in there, people get in their little bubble and they're not paying attention. And that part, people get hurt because they're not paying attention. That's the problem I have with music skiing. I, like, put one in, leave your other ear out so you can hear if something's happening. I love music and, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing more music again. We've been in the bubble for a while. Dancing again, like being somewhere where you can express yourself in the music. Taos is a great place for music. It was when I moved here. The shows that pop up in, in Kit Carson Park. Amazing. Yeah, well, there's going to be some good ones this summer. Like Ben Harper's coming, uh, Revolution, and I think ZZ Top. As a fellow New Mexico person, red or green chili, do you have a favorite? I'm a Christmas guy. You're a Christmas guy? I always get both. I choose between the two. I, I loved red chili growing as a kid, and then green chili came in, and now I'm just like getting both. I'm a mixer. You never know. Certain restaurants. Some have better ones than others. My favorite restaurant in San Jose is Trisco's. You know where that is? I do. They got great red chili, so I'll get the red chili a lot there. But I like their green too, so like I, it's hard for me to not have both. And, and that is the beauty of the Christmas chili. Which for those watching, that's when you put the green chili on one side and the red chili on the other side. Right. You have Christmas. Yeah. But if I was to get a handheld burrito, I do the same thing. I'm like, no, put it in there. And I, they mix them and then like, whatever. Much like if you're going to buy some snow sports gears, snow sport gear from y'all, you can get the skis or the snowboard. Hmm? Or, or the snowboard, exactly. Huh. So maybe you're not <clears throat> sure which one you like. Get both. Hmm? Get both. <laughs> exactly. That's a good way to put it. Um, right now is kind of my like downtime. I mean, we're getting ready. We're making the new skis. Go to my website, justpoint.com. Keep an eye out. You know, this summer, you know, hopefully do do some events. But... Well, well, let me know if anything happens. I'll, oh. I'll come check it out. Started making Art in the Raw in the Wild episodes. So sometimes that happens too. You go out and do the, <clears throat> you go and be in it. Yeah. Instead of being on the other side of the, the laptop you know oh cool that'll be fun kind well you fun. have to do that when you come to Taos. Yeah, exactly so so anyways thank you so much ted for for joining us it was fun hanging out and oh, thank you for having me let's stay in touch and and talk soon awesome thank you so much thank you oh.